Hello, my name is Dr. Larry Gershowitz, and together with my partner, Dr. Craig Ress, we specialize in the treatment of hair loss. I always joke with all our patients, and I say that living in South Africa, one should not be entitled to your own opinion. The only opinion anyone should be entitled to is an informed opinion. As far as hair loss goes, there are thousands of myths. As much as 80% of men and 4 to 8% of women suffer from genetic hair loss. We call it androgenetic alopecia. You may notice that it only affects the top and the front of the head in a horseshoe shape. The sides is always spared. If one looks around, there is no such thing as a totally bald individual. If you see someone without any hair on their head, they have shaved it all off. Men only lose hair in a horseshoe shape on the top of the head. The sides and the back are never lost. Even a hundred-year-old man has a thick wad of hair in this area. Some men only lose hair in the front. In the old days, they used to say, these were the good thinkers. Some men only lose hair in the crown. These were referred to as the good lovers. All the hair on the head is dead protein. We can cut it, perm it, style it, color it. The follicle, which lies within the skin, is one of the most actively dividing cells in the body. It deposits its cells on the outside and so the hair shaft elongates and grows in length. In a predisposed individual, someone who has inherited this disease either from the mother or the father or a combination of the two, a microscopic structure known as a receptor is found on the follicle. Already from the age of 13, 80% of boys' hairlines starts receding. What happens at 13? Male hormone kicks in. This male hormone, testosterone, is like a key which fits specifically into the tiny little receptor, the lock. This causes the hair to gradually become thinner, finer, lighter, shorter and shorter, and eventually disappears completely. This process is known as miniaturization. The hair on the sides and the back of the head develops embryonically from a different area and never develops these receptors. Hence, these hairs will never fall out. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, first noticed that eunuchs, sexually immature men, never lost their hair. 2,400 years later, Scientists at Duke's University showed the association between testosterone and male pattern baldness. Finally, a cure had been found, but castration was not commercially acceptable. The hair care industry is worth more than $8 billion annually worldwide. It is interesting to note that every year the Federal Drug Administration, the FDA in America, receives more than 30,000 product submissions claiming to stimulate hair growth. To date, only two such products have received their approval, namely minoxidil and finasteride. Although minoxidil has been on the market for more than 30 years, its mechanism of action is still not clearly understood today. We do know that it stimulates hair to stay in the growing phase longer and stimulates the resting hair to come out of the resting phase sooner. It is topically applied and has to be applied twice a day for it to have any effect. Finasteride 1 mg tablet is the first oral medication that looks at this as a disease. It is highly effective and has become the gold standard in the treatment of male pattern baldness. In clinical studies, it has been shown to be effective in more than 86% of patients. Contrary to popular belief, finasteride is not an anti-testosterone drug, but rather it inhibits the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. It is this dihydrotestosterone that has its effect on male pattern baldness. Finasteride is an incredibly well-tolerated drug. You can mix it with other medication, you can mix it with alcohol, no problems. It does not cause any nausea or vomiting. I have been taking it myself for the last 10 years. 
it must always be remembered that there is no magic cure for hair loss. The most expensive treatment is the one that doesn't work. It doesn't matter if you spend one rand on a product. If it doesn't work, you have wasted your money. Once the hair has miniaturized and bald skin appears, no prayers, no potions, no lotions, and certainly no laser light will bring these hairs back. And that is where the medical hair restoration team comes in. Many years ago, scientists took a plug of hair from the sides and planted it into the front. Lo and behold, the hair grew, but it left terrible scars, it was very painful, and the results looked a little bit like Don King on Viagra. This was also known as the Barbie doll or cornrow effect. Although these early procedures were performed well over 25 years ago, the stigma is still attached today. These days, the whole technique has been refined. Under local anesthetic, as painful as a visit to the dentist, most probably not even that painful, a thin strip of skin is removed from the side and the back of the head. This area is known as the donor area. The follicles in this area are not predisposed to fall out. The two sides are then sutured together, leaving an almost undetectable scar. The donor strip is then dissected into its individually occurring micro and mini follicular units. Each graft contains one to three hairs. Anywhere from two and a half to nine thousand individual hairs can be harvested from the donor area. The number of harvested grafts is dependent on the size of the balding area. What, what we've got here at Mark Out Your Hairline, distance from your chin to your nose, being the same as your eyebrow to your hairline, uh -huh. okay? Normal male pattern of forward, back, sharp angle, forward again. And although I've drawn this line with great care, what I'm going to be doing here is going up and down from it to give you this sort of zigzag appearance you've got there, you see uh -huh. there, uh -huh. okay? So I'll be using single hairs here, double hairs here, and three and four hairs behind here to give density. Uh -huh. Small and minute lateral slits are made in the direction in which the hairs would grow. Each individual graft is then inserted into these tiny little lateral slits. It bleeds slightly, forms a little scab. A week to ten days later, the entire area has healed and no scabs, marks or scars are visible. If the patient does not wish for anyone to know that they have had the procedure done, it is suggested that they take off 10 days. The newly transplanted area will contain small hair shafts. These will fall out after two to three weeks. Then patience is required. It takes three to four months for the transplanted follicles to generate a new hair. Because these follicles are relocated from the donor area, they do not contain a receptor and will never interact with the circulating testosterone. These transplanted hairs will continue to grow. You can cut it, wash it, and even dye it pink. The very same transplanted hairs will continue to grow until the day you die. 100% guaranteed. <coughs> Hi, my name is Quentin Chong. I'm the two-time one Muay Thai champion. I run Muay Thai for South Africa and a co-owner with my brother in the Muay Thai gym, Dragon Power. As you can see, I'm smiling today. Um, I have had a micro graft done to my head, which is a, a procedure where they take your own hair follicles and they put it in the front. Um, it's a painless procedure, but it's gradual. After the first day, it takes about three to four months for full growth. But I mean, you can see it's, it's amazing. I've got a full ponytail from being bold before so like I said I'll recommend it to you my brother's also done it now and um, like I said we feel younger and and if they either jump on a bandwagon you left behind my name is Paul I'm a hairdresser here and uh, I do a lot of uh, cosmopolitan clients who come here <coughs> and um, what I want to say is that I had a hair transplant about uh, six months ago and that I'm very, very happy with it. 
the, I must say that uh, the procedure was not painful at all. And uh, another wonderful thing is that uh, when I asked my clients from overseas, that the ones who had transplants in America, Europe, that the procedure here is actually a third or a quarter of the price than what they pay in Europe. And uh, I must say, when I uh, look at the hair transplant and the way it's done, that I can uh, say with ease that this uh, procedure here is uh, definitely superior and more refined. As well, they are very professional and advise you exactly what they need about the hairline and everything. Hi, I'm Winston Chong, and um, I had a problem with my receding hairline. Um, since I saw my brother, I was just a bit fascinated about what, what has, you know, his hair been growing so quickly. So he recommended me with a hair transplant. Um, but I was a bit scared of doing operation, but he's kind of informed me that it's safe, you know, it's, it's not dangerous and it's, it's just quickly repaired and quickly recovered. So, you know, after a couple of weeks, I'm back in training. You know, my hair is growing back again. So I'm completely happy. It is so refined that you cannot see a line. Uh, like I, uh, in the olden days where they used to uh, do these plaques and you see these little islands of black hair all over. But now, as you can see clearly, it's a, a very, very natural look here. Today, hair transplantation is a natural and undetectable procedure. We offer a 100% guarantee. Every single hair we put in, not may, not could, but will grow. If one hair doesn't grow, we will replace that free of charge. Well, it changed my life, of course. So I can highly recommend this. I must say this is probably one of the best things I've done in my life. Thank you. Our aim at Medical Hair Restoration Clinic is to keep you in a full head of hair. I hope that this CD will help make your decision that much easier. Well, definitely don't wait. Like I said, look at us. Two brothers, we're still young and yeah, we'll never be happier. Yeah. Definitely.